Hi, my name's Mark. I'm one of the pastors here at Trillium. Right at this moment that we're taping, I'm going through something that's quite upsetting, and I have to find some way of setting it aside, get focused again on what really matters. I feel like I'm in a Charlie Brown, Charlie Brown Christmas special in that moment when Linus says, lights please, and the lights go down, and then he tells Charlie Brown the real meaning of Christmas. I think that moment comes f for all of us. We get caught up in the craziness of life, and we need someone or something to remind us what really matters. I think that, you know, in a sense, we're on that journey to awakening, to that moment when we come to a realization of what life's really about. I, I remember, and I've mentioned this to you before, about my father passing away, and, and I remembered those words that I had said two weeks earlier. I was out golfing, and I was whacking the club around, and I was a really passionate golfer, but the more I practiced, the more lessons I took, the worse it got for me. And then one day, two weeks before my dad died, I was out playing and I hit such a terrible shot that I just threw my glove, club on the ground and the friend I was playing with looked at me and said, Mark, it's just a game. And I said to him, what do you mean it's just a game? It's life. And then two weeks later, my father dies and I realized that those words were just so ridiculous. It is just a game. Almost everything we do is just a game. It doesn't really matter that much. And we get caught up in all the drama of life and we miss out on what really matters most. Jesus says we must deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow after him. And, and the important part of that, I think, is the motion of life that we're called to embark on when we follow Jesus. Literally, to follow someone means to get moving. And yet, most of the time, we're caught up in this kind of inner resistance within us, and we don't seem to be able to move in any specific direction. All we're kind of constrained and shackled by our own thinking and the patterns of our own lives our own addictions and compulsions that keep holding us down. And we need Linus to come on and say, lights please, for us. And tell us again what really matters, what Christmas is about, what life's about. Don't you really want to know what life's really about? And the world is trying to trick us away, trying to distract us away from what matters most. And Jesus calls us to embark on a sacred pilgrimage to the soul, to the heart the heart of the matter. And we resist. We, we resist. We resist going to the very place where we most powerfully need to go. You know, resistance is such an endemic part of life. It's such a basic part of life. It's, it filters through everything that we do. My drumming, my hand drumming. I want to be this effortless player, and yet my muscles are fighting themselves. There's tension in my body as my muscles fight themselves. And somehow I have to figure out how to let go, to release to soften into the drum beat, to allow my arms just to move freely, to get motion again going. Many of us are so filled with resistance that we don't even know how to release. We get caught up in the anger of something or some injustice or some frustration, and it goes with us, and it consumes us. And Jesus calls us as his disciple to just release, to, to surrender. That's what it means to deny yourself, just to surrender into the moment and let go. And letting go is such a hard thing to do sometimes. We had Greta Hostra out last Sunday, and she was talking about walking the Camino de Santiago, 900 kilometers across northern Spain, this sacred of pilgrimages. You know, the interesting thing that she noted when she got on to that, that sacred journey was that sense of rapport she had with other pilgrims. There was this instant connection she had with people that she couldn't really explain because she didn't know them. She didn't know them from really a hill of beans. She'd never met them before, yet that instant connection because they were engaged in the same purpose in life, which was to walk the Camino. It's funny, I, I had that experience coming out of Lassard House. Lassard House is a hospice. And as I was walking out the front door, some people were walking in and we looked at each other and we smiled at each other. And there was that instant recognition that we were fellow pilgrims on the journey of life. We shared the same basic conundrum in life that someone we loved was dying and we needed a journey with them to that, that step in their life. You know, you and I were called by God to go on these sacred journeys. The sacred journey to, has always been done in the purposes of love Jesus always calls us to take up our cross, which is the cost of love in life. 
That's what it is to take up your cross. It's the cost of love. And we know in our hearts and our minds that love costs. It does cost. When you love someone with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and they are dying in front of you, it hurts like hell. It really hurts. It feels like you're in hell. But in some sense, we wouldn't have it any other way. What's the alternative? To not love with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength? To back away from life? To be distant from life so that we have no deep connections with anyone or anything? Maybe that is sometimes our choice. Maybe we do back away from things that matter most. Maybe we hide ourselves in all the distractions so we don't have to be confronted with that moment of love's cost. You, know, you love somebody and the, the relationship breaks up and it hurts. Or someone gets hurt in your midst that you love and to journey with them as they get well, it hurts. Or to see someone going through chronic unemployment or other kinds of personal struggles, it hurts to go with them. But what is our alternative today, really? What is our alternative? God made you for love. God made you for love. God made you to extend love. And when you offer yourself, when you're willing to lift up your cross, when you're willing to be broken in love, there is a sacred promise that the Lord gives you that you will be transformed and reborn, that life will not end in that moment, but will truly begin for you and me, that there's a great vision of ourselves waiting for us at the end of that journey, wherever it might be. I pray for you today as we get ready for Christmas and all these distractions and all the franticness that you might find a soulfulness in this time of life, that you might find a peace, that you might find a way to extend love to people around you, whether you know them or you don't. Look for the sacred face in your neighbor. Look for the sacred face in your spouse or your children or the stranger ahead of you in the lineup in the store. Know that, that the Prince of Peace is being born in any stable that might exist in this world. The stable of your heart this day is waiting for the rebirth of the Son of God in you. Rejoice. Rejoice. That the moment of God has come to you today. Go in peace.